Did you know there's a sin the Bible labels as unforgivable? Sounds controversial, doesn't it? But what if I told you there's more to this story than meets the eye? In this video, I'm going to uncover a forgotten secret that could radically shift your understanding of sin and forgiveness. Stay with me and uncover a truth that could free your mind and soul. Are you ready to hear something that might change your life? In the Bible, there's mention of a sin considered beyond divine forgiveness. This mysterious reference comes from the Synoptic Gospels, texts that intertwine to narrate Jesus' life from different yet complementary perspectives. Within these, in Matthew 12, we find a particularly striking passage. There, a sin is revealed so severe that according to the sacred texts, it cannot be forgiven, neither in this earthly life nor in the eternity that follows. I often notice the unrest and anxiety that grips many believers, tormented by the gnawing doubt. Have they committed this unforgivable sin? It's remarkable and somewhat alarming how many messages we receive daily. People from all walks of life, consumed by uncertainty, fearing they have fallen into this fatal and irreversible error. You'd be surprised at the number of souls wandering under the weight of this fear, the persistent dread of having crossed this forbidden line. However, what becomes clear amid all these questions is a certain lack of understanding about the true nature of this unforgivable sin. To clear the shadows of doubt, it's crucial to understand that this sin isn't confused with acts of idolatry, murder, moral perversions, or adultery. In fact, the unforgivable sin turns out to be a transgression of a more profound and complex nature, intertwined with the intricate matters of faith and redemption. In Matthew 12, 22 to 34, we witness a moment of profound revelation and challenge. Jesus Christ, at the height of his ministry, encounters a man tormented by demons, deprived of sight and speech. The healing performed by Jesus is nothing short of miraculous. The man, once blind and mute, now sees and speaks. This extraordinary act of transformation causes quite a stir among the onlookers. They marvel, whispering among themselves, pondering if they are in the presence of the promised Son of David. However, the Pharisees, religious leaders of that time, witnessing this event, cast a dark accusation. They attribute Jesus' power over demons to an alliance with Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Jesus, recognizing the malice in their words, responds with wisdom that challenges their logic. A kingdom divided against itself is doomed to fall. If he were casting out demons by Beelzebub's power, then Satan's own kingdom would be self-destructing. He also questions the origin of the Pharisees' followers' power in exercising demons, pointing out the inconsistency in their accusations. Jesus continues with a compelling parable about breaking into a strong man's house, explaining how one must first bind the strong man before plundering his possessions. He uses this metaphor to illustrate the conquest over demonic power and the arrival of God's kingdom. Firmly, he declares that those not with him are against him, and those not gathering with him scatter. Next, Jesus presents one of the most profound and severe statements. All sins and blasphemies can be forgiven, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. He clarifies that speaking against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will face an unforgivable fate in this age and the next. He concludes with a powerful comparison between trees and their fruits, demonstrating that the intrinsic nature of a thing is revealed by its actions and words. He warns his listeners, calling them a brood of vipers, questioning how they can speak good things while being evil, for it's from the heart that words flow. It's crucial to understand the context and target audience of Jesus' warning about the unforgivable sin. He isn't addressing his faithful followers, but a specific group of Pharisees entrenched in disbelief. So how exactly did these Pharisees commit such a sin? 
The key episode occurs when they attribute Jesus' miraculous works to the devil. In Matthew 12, 24, after witnessing a miracle, they say, this man does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Notice that in their words, there's no direct mention of the Holy Spirit. They don't explicitly speak against the Spirit, but they make a grave error by attributing the divine works performed by Jesus to demonic power. This means they are, in fact, denying and rejecting the Holy Spirit's work in Jesus, which constitutes the essence of the unforgivable sin. This attitude not only challenges Jesus' authority, but also rejects the salvation he offers. By labeling Jesus' work, which is clearly divine and benevolent, as an act of evil, they place themselves in direct opposition to the salvific and redemptive power of the Holy Spirit. Essentially, they are denying that Jesus is the living Son of God, thus rejecting salvation itself. This brings us to a crucial question. Can a Christian, someone born again, commit such a sin? The answer is a resounding no. A true Christian who understands and accepts Jesus' work would never attribute his works to the devil. Therefore, for a believer, the fear of having committed the unforgivable sin is unjustified. Those who commit this sin do so consciously and irrevocably. These individuals do not repent of their actions as they view Jesus' work as malevolent. They are in a state of complete rejection, not just of Jesus, but of all hope for salvation. For those who seek Jesus in faith, recognizing his divinity and accepting him as the path to God, the unforgivable sin is out of reach. They live under the grace and forgiveness that Jesus offers, free from the fear of having made an irreparable mistake. The central point of this message is God's infinitely merciful and forgiving nature. Regardless of the mistakes you may have made in the past, God is always ready to forgive. It is crucial that you do not live under the yoke of fear or the belief that you are condemned to hell. God embodies forgiveness and compassion. As Matthew 12, 31 teaches us, therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven men. This means that except for the specific blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, every other sin can be forgiven. Reflect on this. What past mistakes still haunt you Today is the day to confess these sins and free yourself from their weight. You are tormenting yourself over something God has already forgiven. It's time to move forward, to leave the past behind. Free yourself from guilt and the burden you carry. God in his essence is love and forgiveness. Do not let the spirit of condemnation rule your life. In my years as a Christian minister, I've realized something important. The devil knows those who are truly reborn believers. While he cannot hinder your eternal salvation, he will certainly try to make your earthly life miserable through the spirit of condemnation. Many Christians live as if the sins they have committed are unforgivable. This belief is a deception. If you are a child of God, he is not angry with you. God doesn't use hell as a looming threat over us. He deeply loves and cares for each of us. Therefore, I encourage you to embrace this truth. God is ready to forgive and has already done so. It's time to accept that forgiveness, live free from guilt and fear, and enjoy the love and peace that come from a relationship with God. Our human condition is intrinsically marked by sin from birth. It's a universally acknowledged truth that sin has its price, a price that is always fully exacted with no discounts or exceptions. But thankfully, we are not alone in this journey. Thanks to God, we have a savior, Jesus Christ, who came precisely for people like us, sinners. Jesus came into the world to save us, to rescue us from this unpayable debt of sin. He came for you and me, we are exactly the kind of people for whom he dedicated his redemptive mission. So I encourage you today to turn away from your sins and confess them to the Lord so you can receive divine blessings. God is infinitely forgiving. He's not like humans 
who often hold grudges or harbor resentments. When we confess our sins and repent, God blesses us. Remember what Romans 4, 7 says, blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. When God forgave you at that sublime moment of salvation, his forgiveness was complete and definitive. Your sins were forgiven and forgotten. This truth should be a cause for great joy and proclamation. God will never use your past sins against you. He won't bring them up to humiliate or blackmail you. Once forgiven, your sins are erased and paid for. And it was Christ who paid the sins price for us because someone had to pay. And because of him, you are forgiven. What a wonder it is to know that your record has been cleared and you are free from all your transgressions. Reflect on all the mistakes you've made and know that each one has been forgiven. As Romans declares, we are truly blessed because our sins have been forgiven and forgotten. And now your dwelling is in heavenly glory. Your citizenship is in heaven. Your name is inscribed in the Lamb's book of life. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, guaranteeing your redemption. Yes, you are forgiven. This is the divine promise and the hope we have in Christ. You belong to a divine lineage, a distinct and chosen generation, a royal priesthood, part of a holy nation. This is your true identity. You are God's property and he is your eternal guardian. Consider this, in our human journey, we often face rejection and lack of forgiveness from those close to us. Your mother, your father may harbor resentments for the mistakes you've made. Your spouse may find it hard to forgive certain faults. But what a wonder it is to serve a God who transcends these human limitations. He forgives us not based on others' willingness to forgive us, but on his own merciful and loving nature. As stated in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This promise is the foundation of our faith and hope. While humans may be flawed with holding forgiveness and dwelling on the past, God offers us a completely different reality. He welcomes us with open arms, ready to cleanse and renew us, regardless of our past mistakes. Yes, your family may hold your past against you for the rest of your life, but rejoice and be thankful to God, for in the heavenly realm you are forgiven. This divine forgiveness is an immeasurable gift, a guarantee that no matter the weight of your past, you can break free from those chains and walk towards a future of grace and redemption. God doesn't just forgive, he erases our mistakes and invites us to live a new life under the light of his mercy and love. Therefore, embrace this transformative truth. You are part of a chosen and blessed generation, destined not for condemnation, but for freedom and eternal life. In God, we find a safe haven, unconditional love and forgiveness that renews our soul. With God, our past doesn't define our future. We are renewed and empowered to live a life full of purpose and peace. We've come to the end of this enlightening journey, but this is just the beginning. Imagine how many more mysteries and impactful truths await you in our other videos. If you feel this message has touched your heart, there's so much more we've prepared, especially for you. Don't miss the chance to delve even deeper. Follow our channel now, leave a like, and share this video. Your comment might be the light someone needs on their path of discovery. Join us on this ongoing journey of exploration and transformation until the next video where we'll continue to uncover secrets that will enrich your life. You won't want to miss it.